Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, we resume our, uh, after that epic event that we did on uh, Saturday, uh, the quiz for a cause. Uh, thank you everyone for being part of that event. And uh, we raised a significant amount of money to help COVID, uh, uh, for COVID relief in India. So thank you all for your generous support. Uh, today's uh, session is going to be uh, a follow-up session to uh, what we have done earlier on our channel. We're going to talk about what happens after FRCR. So all of you uh, uh, must have gone through our blog and our channel. Uh, we, we did a comprehensive video about how can you clear the FRCR exams in, uh, uh, in the first step uh, in one attempt. Uh, this is a follow-up video and we're going to discuss what happens uh, after you clear the exam. Uh, how do you apply to places? Where can you practice? How is life in the UK and uh, what should you expect? Uh, so for this, we have uh, Dr. Tejas Kapadia. Dr. Tejas uh, is a uh, consultant pediatric radiologist at Royal Manchester Hospital UK. Uh, his primary interests are oncoradiology and pediatric neuroradiology. Uh, he's been an academic, uh, he loves academics, uh, right, uh, uh, since he was a resident, I remember he used to uh, post uh, uh, regular teaching sessions when he was a resident back in Mumbai, India, and that's how I knew him, uh, kind of virtually, uh, and uh, now that I know that he was in UK, I requested him to take a session uh, uh, with us, uh, talking about uh, his experience uh, of getting a job, working in the UK, and what happens after the FRCR exam. Uh, his, uh, he currently is a tutor and educational supervisor for trainees uh, at the uh, Northwest England Radiology Training Scheme. Uh, he's also currently spearheading a multi-institutional research uh, uh, project on imaging of rhabdomyosarcoma across the UK and uh, a regional uh, study on abdominal manifestations of COVID-19. So from that, uh, I could definitely say that uh, he's continuing what he was doing here. So he's continuing his academics. And without wasting any further time, I would request uh, Dr. Tejas uh, to uh, start sharing his presentation. Over to you, Dr. Tejas. Hi, Amar. Hi. Yeah, I was just checking on, on the um, YouTube app if I'm seen now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thanks a lot for the kind in, uh, introduction and um, kind words. So <clears throat> I'll be speaking uh, briefly about how I got here and um, what are the challenges you face when you plan to move country and also uh, what are the perks and disadvantages of uh, moving abroad. So uh just the opening slide will explain a lot of things um i guess uh because once you think of doing frcr you think of uk not only uk but you also think of oh maybe singapore or maybe australia or canada i already see some questions popping up um about uh, various destinations so uh, to be very honest, FRCR is best uh, suited if you are planning to move to UK. Um, so uh, I think I'll, I'll go through uh, most of it individually as we move through uh, the presentation. So uh, thinking of uh, FRCR is equal to UK is, um, is almost like a bubble uh, <laughs> because it's not a very straightforward path. Once you plan to give FRCR, you need to put in a lot of years. So you need to think ahead. It's not like you think of going to UK, let's do FRCR and in a year you'll move to UK. No, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to give you any false hopes. Uh, you need a, at least about three, three and a half years to four years of, uh, uh, of background and line work just to get over to UK and uh, start working here. So when I say UK, UK encompasses uh, four nations, England, Wales, Scotland, and North of uh, Ireland. So once you get FRCR, you can apply in any of these uh, nations, wherever, wherever you want. Um, so I am in England, somewhere here is Manchester um, and somewhere, uh, somewhere here is uh, London. So there are many good hospitals and universities all across uh, UK. So when you speak of radiology in uh, UK, they are primarily uh, governed by the Royal College of Radiologists. 
but uh, like we have uh, medical council of india in india similarly we have the general medical council here so you need to have registration with the general medical council to be able to practice here as a doctor no matter what um, uh, position you are in be a trainee or a fellow or as a locum consultant or a permanent post you need to have general medical council registration so frcr is basically fellowship of the royal college of radiologists and um, like it has been discussed extensively uh, on previous occasions there are three steps to it step 1 is physics and anatomy uh, uh, getting position for uh, physics is very competitive uh, step 2a is again just theory mcq based exam and step 2b is the practical which can, which um, has a uh, subsections of um, long cases viva and uh, spotters so i will not go more into detail about the frcr examination because it has already been covered before so what happens after you pass um, frcr so step 1 is you need to start um applying for nhs uh, job offers if you if you are looking forward to move to uk um and simultaneously the step 2 would be to get your registration done with the general medical council and once you're sorted uh, with your registration with gmc as well as uh, once you have a job offer then you can go forwards with visa and then fly to uk so um these are very three uh, basic steps and a crude way of saying it because it involves a lot of other paperwork and hard work um having said that for gmc registration um and also for the visa purpose you need uh, english uh, basic english skills so that uh, is tested either uh, by um ielts because we are not an english sp uh, speaking of india india is not an english speaking uh, uh nation per se the national language is hindi so we need to prove that we are fluent in uh, listening reading writing and speaking in english so a band score 7 is required in all modules individually um uh, when we appear for the ielts so ielts can be uh, conduct can be conducted either by the british council or the idp so i would suggest when you plan giving ielts kindly suggest uh, kindly select the uk vi option which is the uk visa uh, ielts option because invariably uh, once you even after you get your gmc registration done with a regular ielts for the uk visa you will need the uk vi ielts so in the first go itself uh take the uk vi il so you don't have to give it give this exam again um the other option is occupational english test so i honestly i gave ielts i was comfortable with ielts so um i i didn't do much research about occupational english test but some people who are not from main cities they they generally uh, find it a bit difficult uh, especially with the speaking component uh, because uh, i i remember i scored 7 and a half out of 9 uh, in speaking whereas i scored much better in the in rest of the three so speaking component is uh, is a bit tough um, so for them occupational english test is uh, something which they can take up <clears throat> the third option why i'm talking to you about this option is because um it's mentioned on the website as well and this is something which i came across when i was doing my visa application so before doing my visa application i was not aware that i have to do a uk vi ielts i had done just a regular ielts which is basically the same same exam paper same scoring system same exam is everything same it's just the subheading under which you select the exam so because i had done a regular ielts um for the visa purpose um i had already submitted my documents for visa and after a few days i real uh, somebody told me that i need to have a uk vi so then i researched a bit and then i found there's another option called as uk naric which is now they've changed the name to ectes so it's basically you submit your uh, mbbs and your uh, md or dnb uh, documents to this ukinaric uh, organization and then 
um, just uh, and have a letter from the uh, from your institute that the entire course was taught in english and also the examinations were in english then that on that basis um, i was this ukvi was exempted from my um, visa application so that is a <clears throat> small way in which uh, in case you don't have ukvi you can still go ahead with the visa application um so how do you find the uh, radiology jobs so the be- so the easiest way is to get in touch with numerous agencies there are there are so many agencies in uk who offer uh, to get you on board um so speaking of agencies again um so we don't have to pay anything to the agents beware don't end up paying fees to the agents because the agents are paid directly by the employing hospital so we actually don't have to pay anything to any of the agencies they will do everything uh, on your behalf and also help you with your application that is one way the other way if you want to apply directly to any hospital then the vacancies are generally advertised on the individual hospital trust sites or uh, on various sub specialty uh, societies for example uh, british society of neuro radiology will advertise in their vacancy section uh, the neuro radiology related jobs and so on so um, so when we speak of uh, nhs hospitals uh, they they are either the district general hospitals or the tertiary hospitals so district general hospitals are a bit more peripheral hospitals where uh you will end up doing uh, more general radiology work but if you have a lot of colleagues then you can uh do some sub specialty work as well uh whereas in a tertiary hospital um at the beginning itself you can um agree with uh, sub specialization practice uh i will go through it um in some time so just showing you an example of uh, um of an nhs trust which encompasses numerous hospitals under the umbrella so i am in manchester so the trust under which i work is called as the manchester university nhs foundation trust and then there are numerous hospitals under this trust so i work at royal manchester children's hospital which is a tertiary hospital and then there are few hospitals like the withington community uh, hospital or the altrincham hospital these are the district general hospitals so if you um, for example i'll just take you through the um, through the website of uh, manchester university nhs foundation trust uh, here you can see in the careers uh, section then you can directly um, move to medical dental jobs and then you can find all the vacancies which are there in uh, in medical field um, that's one way of doing it um so the post which you take up uh would be a locum post initially because um s- since we are coming from another country uh we cannot directly register ourselves on the specialist uh, register um in uk when i say specialist register it basically means that you are not um uh general physician you are a radiologist so you need to get yourself registered under the specialist uh, radiology register so um for that purpose you need to uh, do some comparability work to show that your education and your background is comparable to what a radiologist would undergo uh, in a training in uk or uh, or the work pattern in uk so that process is called as caesar um it is a lengthy process and it can take about 1 to 2 years just to get all your documents sorted so the documentation goes on to about 1000 pages of documentation uh and once you submit all your documents then the caesar committee takes about 3 to 6 months for processing it so i have attended a few courses on uh, how to go about your caesar application and um the common the common factor amongst all of all of the talks is that the best way to take up a caesar application is uh, after coming to uk on locum at, and stay here for at least uh, a minimum of 2 to 3 years and then apply for caesar 
So in that way, what happens is once you get into the system, you start sorting out all your basic documents um, um, as you are working and that really helps towards your application. So I'll just quickly show you um, how a Caesar application is and what are the requirements. So you will get this on, on the GMC uh, UK website uh, about all the documentation which is needed uh, and what all evidence uh, have to be provided. So uh, it's uh, earlier it was in a uh, hardbound paper, but now everything is online. So you need to do a lot of work. Just for example, your primary medical qualification, you need to do something called as primary source uh, verification with, um, with something called as ECFMG. <clears throat> so I think this ECFMG verification is already done for your uh, primary medical qualification when you are applying here for GMC registration. Similarly, you need to get uh, a lot of other documentations and submit a lot of other papers. Uh, that is Caesar for you. Um, so when you, are, when, you, when you get a job offer um, and when you're finally uh, decided to get in, a work visa is what uh, is been offered and uh, because radiologists in UK are on a shortage of occupation list there's a great demand so the visa generally doesn't um, cause much of a problem uh, so on a locum post you generally get a tier 2 visa and your uh, spouse can work as a dependent on the tier 2 visa you can also get your uh, children along there's no issues with that so tier 2 is towards the higher categories of uh, visa I'll just briefly tell you what my role in department is, where I'm working. So I came here in December, 2018. It's almost three years now. And um, what is required uh, from any, any of my colleagues is to be a good team player to cover up for your colleagues. <clears throat> So in this short stint, um, in my first uh, NHS job, I've already become an oncology MDT department lead. I do all the MDTs, multidisciplinary team meetings between various departments. Um, and, I, and I conduct a lot of these oncology, neurology, um, neuro-oncology and proton beam meetings. Also have recently been promoted as the <clears throat> chief clinical radiation expert for body imaging for the department for the purpose of project approvals. Uh, like Amar mentioned initially, I'm an education supervisor and there is one radiology trainee under me um, who uh, through, his, through her five years of training, I'll be supervising her about her journey through radiology. <clears throat> so how, what is a typical week for me, um, everything over here is very organized. Let me just show you how, show you my job plan. <clears throat> so yeah, so when I uh, I was uh, saying that um, one PA is basically uh, four hours of work. Uh, so one single day would would be about uh, two PAs, and uh, that's how there are ten PAs, which uh, which which is five days of work. Out of those <clears throat> 10 PAs, eight PAs are direct clinical care and two PAs are uh, supporting professional activities. So in these eight PAs I'm doing, because I'm a pediatric radiologist, I would, I would be doing uh, anything from about ultrasound, fluoroscopy, uh, CTMR reporting, or maybe some portable NICU sessions or uh, um, nuclear medicine reporting sessions depends on what I'm comfortable with and what has been agreed in my job plan. The supporting professional activities. Um, so in my hospital, it is a bit flexible. So I can either do it from home or I can do it from the hospital. Uh, uh, I can sit in the sit in my office in the hospital and do it. So <clears throat> in the supporting professional activities, there are a lot of things. Um, it's not only um, just uh, research based or something you can do, but you in that time you can prepare for, uh, for example, teaching, teaching your local trainees, 
or looking after some of your other personal objectives like for example i am refining all the mr protocols for the department things like that or maybe um, like in my new role of a clinical relation expert i will i'll be going through the project approvals and things like that so that is spa uh, that is what spa is for so uh, just, uh, some again sorry for the interruption a few of the viewers uh, would like if you can just uh, zoom into uh, the slide like if you would zoom the slider because excellent yeah thank you and uh, sorry for the interruption again oh no 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 issues at all no issues at all it's good actually it's uh, it's good that you are moderating and it's dynamic so anything i miss you can always tell me um <clears throat> um so because i'm a pediatric radiologist i have about uh, one in seven on call uh, commitment and due to which i have slightly higher spas because i'm doing uh, one weekend every sixth weekend uh, on call which is friday saturday and sunday uh most of the trust they offer 1.5 um spa some might offer one some might offer two uh the district general hospitals generally offer 1.5 because for the on call uh, commitments at district general hospital most of it is outsourced so the out of hour works uh work is outsourced at most of the district general hospitals and that's why uh, generally on the weekend you don't have to be um on call um <clears throat> so i'll just quickly show you a typical timetable uh so as you can see how specific this is every hour of your work is uh taken into consideration and this is all done by myself i can choose what i want to that amount of flexibility is offered over here other than some of the sessions which which of course uh everyone has to do so uh this is just an example of uh, how i'm working monday to thursday in my uh, clinical commitments and then friday i usually do the spa work um saturday sundays are off uh, other than when i'm on call so there are different weekly scenarios uh, which which are agreed to in my job plan so it's very um very organized is what i can say um so if you see uh each of my activity uh, has a number of hour uh, so this is basically not to keep an eye on you this is basically just to check that you are not overworked at the end and your uh, total comes to about 10 pas in a work so that was job plan <clears throat> when i said spa time uh, some of it goes into local trust training and courses uh, so what are these local trust training and courses so once you join here you will come to know that every trust have their own uh, local trainings which you have to do so most of them are uh, on yearly basis so for example um, equality diversity human rights so this would be a small course of about 15 minutes and then questions are asked and then you pass the course or maybe fire safety or safeguarding some of them are face to face course uh, and some of them are just online at the end of the course i get these certificates uh, of all the courses which i have completed and then i need to show them when i have my yearly appraisal so at the end of um, uh, every year you have an appraisal with your clinical director of the department and in your appraisal it's very detailed you you say everything about how your year was what all work you have done what do you expect to do moving forwards um, and uh, so basically you are setting personal objectives and then you see what were your objectives in the past year how much you have worked on them what have, what all things you have completed how much are your cpd activities are they adequate enough because uh, like in every country cpd points are required to gain uh, medical registration for example in uk over 5 years we need about 150 cpd points so looking at cpd activities again it's um, very organized so this is a royal college radiology excel sheet document in which you can document all your cpd activities what all you have done for example you have reviewed an article for a journal or or you have done some local teaching or or done some um frcr teaching things like that so these cpd points uh, are based on the activity and then these are reflected centrally uh, as to how many cpd points you have gained over the time of the year 
so this is available again on the rcr website uh, also rcr has taken out a new app wherein in the app itself you can uh, select your uh, cpd activities and it keeps a track of everything and at the end you can just um, uh, take out the summary for the purpose of appraisal uh another thing which i really like about working in the uk are the realm meetings so we, these are basically uh, discrepancy meetings so cases are submitted to a realm lead in the department so every monthly we have this discrepancy meeting wherein um cases are discussed um cases are anonymized and discussed in front of um all the all your colleagues and then the opinion is taken on that case so these are basically hits and misses some interesting findings will be shown sometimes whatever uh, some simple uh, easy things which you might have missed will be shown but these are all very friendly and healthy and not to put down or pull down anybody so uh, this is uh, for example a typical feedback a general feedback from a real meeting wherein uh, what all things should be considered and what all things can can happen or how can we better ourselves this is basically a learning process um uh regarding leaves and pay scale uh there are about 30 to 32 annual leaves uh which you can take with prior notice uh 20 study leaves are allowed over 3 years which includes uh professional leaves uh then there are sick leaves maternity leaves and paternity leaves for example i got 2 weeks of paternity leave uh last year i'm not sure about how many months but i'm sure there is a good uh, amount of maternity leave about 5 to 6 months if i'm not wrong um so with regards to leaves there are ample of leaves um pay again uh, depends on the years of experience you have had uh, as a consultant before you start working over here so the salary band starts anywhere from 75 to 80000 pounds a year before the tax deductions of 35 to 45 uh, 45% uh, that's the total tax i'm talking about which also includes the national insurance so if you count uh conversion then it's not a very big amount um and somewhat similar to what some of you might be earning in india um but the good thing is you get paid very uh handsomely for all the extra work you do maybe extra reporting sessions or an extra ultrasound list you have done over the weekend or maybe you have done some locum on calls so you get paid well for those uh, on an hourly basis anywhere from about 45 to 100 pounds um the uh, other perk of working in the nhs is that they cover one international conference and they pay up to 600 this is particular to my trust every trust will have their own uh, different rules so my trust covers about 600 pounds uh, for one international conference which can be anything be it course fees or travel or stay etc whatever and for the national conferences there is generally no cap on the number uh, and the amount so i can i i tend to attend most of the national conferences as well even though if they are uh, over the weekend but yeah the number of study leaves is again 20 in 3 years so if you want to take more than those then those would go from your annual leave things like that um work life balance in uk is uh, pretty good because weekends are off uh, weekends when i say weekend it's not just sunday it's saturday and sunday unless i'm on call so you can meet friends go for long drive short staycations sports i play cricket and badminton uh, quite regularly uh, i know of some people playing football going for swimming etc so you have uh, many options um public holidays the good thing about public holidays they are always on a friday or on a monday and that's how you get long weekends uh, along with your saturday and sunday so this is just a chart showing your different uh, public holidays uh, as you can see most of them are on either on a friday or a monday except for the holidays around christmas uh, travel to work is quite easier because public transport is very good it's expensive but it is good or you can drive i i stay 15 minutes away i i like to drive uh, to work M many people cycle to work 
the Indian international driving license uh, is valid for a year. So that is what I had taken. And as soon as I came here, I started driving in a month. Um, but eventually you need to have a UK uh, uh, car driving license and the exams are very tough for it. Um, and uh, dates are not so easy to get. So that is something which you need to consider. Winters over here are long. They can be dull because it rains a lot, especially in Manchester. It's northwest of England. It's called as the rain capital. So it rains quite often. Um, summers are very cheerful and uh, travel to Europe is always on the mind in summers because it is just an hour or two hours flight away. Uh, the expenses here depends on a lot of factors. Uh, depends on what sort of house you want to rent. Uh, be it from a uh, from an apartment or you want to have your own uh, house um, standalone house um, again there will be additional agent fees monthly council tax the rent generally does not include electricity water gas so those are all additional expenses uh, talking of expenses travel by public transport or taxi is expensive Everything is expensive. Groceries are expensive. Restaurants are expensive. <laughs> car insurance for beginners is very expensive. I mean, uh, I bought a car and then I realized, my goodness, the insurance is so, so expensive. I was better off uh, <laughs> with the public transport. But yeah, the good thing is the med medical treatment over here is completely free. For children under the age of 16 years, all the medicines are free. So you take all the any medicine from the pharmacy which are prescribed by a general physician, they'll be free of cost for your children. Um, and any treatment, be it surgery or whatever, is free of cost under the NHS. Um, education for children and childcare is again um, quite expensive. Professional uh, indemnity insurance is a must for anyone uh, who is who's working in the NHS. Even though NHS has their own indemnity, I would, I would recommend to have your own private uh, indemnity insurance as well, which can cost an, um, quite, a, quite something. Um, again, you also have to renew your GMC and RCR membership every year, which can cost up to 900 pounds a year, which is a lot, I feel. And then there are annual fees for memberships of various subspecialty societies. So I am a member of a lot of many uh, subspecialty societies which I'm interested in and which I like to keep in touch with. Uh, but yeah, overall, the, all of these will together cost about 500 pounds a year again. Um, so many people have asked uh, about radiology fellowship in UK. So fellowships, um, I know when you come, when you come from a nation like India where MD or DNB is just of three years, uh, it becomes very um, difficult to choose a subspeciality or to gain subspeciality experience. Um, whereas if, if you see the training scheme in UK, they generally have five years of training in which three years is general radiology and um, <clears throat> two years is then you can train yourself in your subspeciality of interest. So again, for any fellowship in UK, you will need GMC registration. There is no other alternative. And for GMC registration, you either need to have FRCR or you need to have PLAB. Um, but again, for most of the fellowships in UK, they are taken up by trainees who have completed FRCR uh, in UK, and then they apply for the fellowship in UK. So it's nearly impossible for anyone without FRCR to get a fellowship in UK. So again, you have to do fellowship. Uh, you have to do FRCR to get a fellowship. Uh, the duration can be quite variable. Some are observer kind of fellowships where they can be monthly uh, and some, some of them are proper fellowships, which uh, are post FRCR will be half yearly, yearly or about two years duration. Uh, there is another scheme floated by RCR called as on learn and return scheme. I'm not a big fan of this scheme. Um, I'll, I'll come to the global, uh, I'll come to the global radiologist. Uh, UK fellowships are not well renowned in the world because like I said, uh, MD training is five years and there's two years of subspeciality and most of the fellowships are taken up again by the local trainees. Um, and the 
places are limited for international medical graduates again so this is directly copy pasted from the rcr website on global radiologists uh, on loan and return scheme so what they say is uh, this is a route for independently competent radiologists uh, on an on loan return basis for a period of 3 years to develop a specialty interest while delivering service and the role would ideally be suited to those who have worked in radiology for at least 5 years and completed a dnb or md or fr and dnb or md and frcr so you to come under this scheme you need to have frcr after you have completed your dnb or md and you need to have been working in radiology for 5 years which includes the years of your training as well and then this is a commitment of 3 years so the problem with this i have a problem with this because i after doing 5 years of training i intend to work as a consultant and do my own reports and verify and sign off my own reports when you are coming here under this scheme to work for 3 years you will never be able to sign off your own reports uh, especially ct mri uh, and that is what i am not um, so keen on um, promoting this to anyone but yeah i know a few people who have taken this scheme who are not so confident who want to be guided uh, initially yes for them this is a very good very good scheme wherein you'll always be uh, looked after a, a consultant radiologist under you there's one option called as uh, mti or medical training initiative i have not come across anyone from radiology who have taken this option but many people from other fields for example pediatrics or um, or general medicine they do the mti route wherein um, you come here uh, uh, do your plab get your gmc registration come here on a tier 5 visa and then you uh, build your way up and work as um, as a registrar but i'm not quite sure how this completely works for radiology uh, and it's again i am again it's very difficult for anyone to offer you a post in radiology because there are a lot of trainees local trainees over here uh this is from um from an article um um on what to expect uh in united kingdom after coming from india uh, and after completing frcr and they are very nicely compared um, most of the points so the duration over year for training is about 5 years and in india is about 3 years a uh, curriculum year is highly structured compared to unstructured curriculum in india um if we if we look at documentation for example multi source feedback audits logbook appraisal everything is online i do feedbacks for for my trainees at least once a week so we don't have any kind of that uh, any system like that in india and that is what is majorly lacking i feel again cme clinical research and academics is widely prevalent and promoted all throughout i'm sure it says minimal year in india but again there there are a lot of various ways in which the trainees can gain experience um the other points uh is uh work life balance which i've already spoken about working our regulations over here are very strict about 40 to 42 hours per week whereas in india as we know it's not so very well regulated um um again uh the work environment it says non existing i've put a red flag on it uh it is always very competitive i feel and there are always people uh, in your department colleagues or new consultants who will uh, who are coming up and who would want to have a similar job role as yours so it's it's actually quite competitive and cost of living family related expenditure everything is very high compared to india take home salary is the more you earn the more tax you pay um so i would say it's not lucrative uh, to be very honest and you end up uh, earning salary similar to what you would earn in india um just a little bit more maybe um family life sometimes is tricky to maintain 
uh because you don't have house help here so you end up doing everything your by uh, everything by yourself uh right from taking care of your kid um washing utensils things like that so uh you have to be ready to take care of everything on your own and that is something which takes a toll uh sometimes especially your weekends even though you have saturday sunday one of those days will go in just keeping everything clean in your house um so yeah i think i've covered most of it in my talk i um um this is the hospital where i work uh, that's the children's hospital and then the attached others are the other hospitals adult um uh, and um eye hospital etc in the same compound so there are a lot of questions i see i'm i'll uh, i'll leave it to amar how to go about it <laughs> Uh, thank you tejas that was a very elaborative uh, talk in fact uh, you were very like you were so thorough and you were so engaging and in depth that a few of my colleagues who have not taken up the exam or even are not like don't take uh, don't intend to take the exam they were just curious about how uh, a radiologist works in the uk and they were listening to you in uh, uh, very uh, uh, listening to the talk uh, throughout so what i'll do is i will try to uh, uh moderate a few questions the ones which i have already yeah. you have already answered uh we'll keep it that way if you can continue to keep sharing so that will help with the uh presentation uh so the first question that we uh have uh, had is from dr vaibhav jain i don't know if you would be able to answer that uh, uh but i'll put it uh, in a more broader perspective uh once you cleared the frc or exam did you uh, explore other options and uh from whatever you are aware of uh, what other uh, countries can uh, uh, residents uh, explore i uh, i think you made it very clear that uh, the main thing that you should aim for is uk but just in case in your experience did you think about other countries and if yes uh, uh, what uh, uh, other countries can uh, residents consider yeah um so uh, i think there was another question about canada as well so uh, <laughs> i'll put it all together um sure. so before coming to uk i was in singapore for a, a short fellowship for a few months and there i realized that all the trainees in singapore they give frcr um and i was surprised because they have their own md examination and the the training pattern is exactly similar to how it is in uk and they all, uh, by the end of third year and once they start going once they are in the in the fourth year of their training they complete frcr so that's singapore but again getting into singapore on the basis of frcr that route is closed now um so you you can go there you can work there but you will never get a proper consultant post um is what i've learned um with regards to australia <clears throat> so australia has a different board call as uh, a ranger uh, which encompasses both australia and new zealand radiology together so you have even though you have frcr you have to uh, clear the examinations of the ranger board so gaining frcr does not mean that you will get to work as a consultant in australia no it doesn't work that that way you have to give the local examinations in australia clear them and only then you can um, work there as as a consultant i'm not sure about canada i honestly don't know anything about canada so amar would be better suited to answer that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, somebody asked about dubai as well uh, i've heard i've had friends who have gone to the gone to gulf and uh, dubai especially uh, do you have any idea about uh, the middle east uh, for frc or candidates yeah for middle east uh so there are a few hospitals in yeah so before coming to uk i had also had the dubai health authority uh, license i had given exams cleared that and then i decided no i want to go to uk so i know a bit about dubai um there are a few hospitals who advertise post who required american board certified radiologists then there are other hospitals who have no such uh, requirements and that is where uh, your dnb md qualification is well certified but then that's where it gets competitive because there are so many people who want to move to dubai especially to earn some quick money um that you know it gets very difficult and if you have frcr then you certainly have an edge over others otherwise it doesn't really add anything more um 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Dr. Opicuous has asked uh, whether uh, he can give, he or she can give the exam uh, if he has uh, done the residency, his res- his or her residency in Russia. Uh, again, not a post FRCR question, but uh, I don't know if you can answer that. I don't think there are any country restrictions, but uh, as long as you've uh, covered that stipulated training period, I think you would be able to give the exam. Yeah. Um, so there is um, online, if you see, there is something called as FAMER, F-A-I-M-E-R. So FAMER is basically something which will recognize your medical school, be it any country. So if you if you just go log on to that site and search for your medical school or the MBBS um, hospital, if that is recognized, and then after that, if you have a radiology training in your in your country for at least a minimum of three years, which is a requirement for FRCR, then you can give FRCR and then you can uh, get registered. Uh, once you clear FRCR, you can get registered with the GMC is what I understand. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Rad asks a very uh, interesting question, which uh, I think it's uh, valid for all uh, gra- international graduates who leave their country. So he asks, he or she again, asks what presentation should be like, or what preparation should be done in the home country for CESR before moving to UK? Yeah, that is a very good question because uh, <clears throat> many people face challenges with the Caesar application. Um, so I would suggest to um, get your logbooks uh, in place, signed and certified uh, with with a stamp uh, from your departments. Also, sample copy of few of your reports, which you might have done uh, into various uh, different subspecialties. Um, for example, I am working in a pediatric hospital, so I don't get to do any breast radiology here. So if I would have done breast radiology um, back in India, then I can show those reports that, okay, I've done breast radiology as well. So that is what the evidence which you have to show for Caesar. So things like that. So basically it's covering all your points. The best way I would suggest is to go to the Caesar page, which I had shared. And it's a PDF of 45 pages, but there are about four or five pages, which are very important. And if you go through those, you will realize what all things are um, are needed um, for, for submitting for the Caesar application. Uh, I think, yeah, that would be helpful. Uh, and I would request, uh, if you can share these, uh, uh, all the resources, I can put them in the comments uh, and description so that uh, people who are watching it later can directly access that. Yeah, yeah. I will share the common ones which are available yes. online. Of course, I cannot sh- share my job right. plan and few things, right. sure. but rest of it I'll share with you. Yeah, I, uh, Dr. Joseph has asked, uh, uh, can he move uh, to in- Ireland after the FRCR degree? Yes, yes, you can. North Island, uh, you're welcome there. Uh, Dr. Rad also asks if uh, uh, he can enter, he or she can enter radiology training in UK through the CESR CP pathway. I am not sure, to be very honest, because I have not really thought of doing that because I'm almost 38 now. So I right. thought <laughs> maybe maybe going there as a consultant would be a better option if I'm getting that rather than going through the training scheme. But I see a few people who do PLAB who come here and then um, they get into the radiology training scheme after doing some observership posts. So -hmm. that is an option, yes. Uh, Dr. Samir has asked a very specific question, but I like, I think I can like, I'll broaden it. So he's asked, uh, what is the scope for, uh, he asks for Pakistani radiologists, but we can be broad about it. So for international radiologists with FRCR uh, in Ireland and UK. So I think probably he wants to ask uh, like if there is a difference, uh, if somebody is coming from India, is it somebody is coming from Pakistan or say other countries, uh, uh, in general, what is the scope for an international person versus somebody from UK? I think that's what his question meant. Yeah, I think there's no difference, to be honest, because I have colleagues from Sri Lanka, from Pakistan. Um, I know of people who have come from Iran, uh, from Afghanistan. So many, many, many nations from Korea, Malaysia, Philippines. 
so i i don't think there is a difference um in anyone coming from anywhere and um as far as you are qualified as per the specifications there's there's generally not an issue at all okay uh uh dr shiva krishna asks if we do any sub specialty fellowship or pdcc in india uh, is it valid there and i would like to club uh, this with another question by dr rad where he uh, asks how much experience so basically our experience in india be it fellowship or home country fellowships or training how much does uh, that matter uh, in like uk having a fellowship is good uh, but again not having a fellowship fellowship should not be a deterrent for example i am a consultant pediatric radiologist and i have already explained what all things i do and i don't have a pediatric radiology fellowship but uh, i had about 4 years of uh, work experience as a consultant before i moved to uk and in that work experience when i applied for this job i had shown what all pediatric work i had done and they were interested in my application and that's how i got through so to be very honest um for my particular hospital there was no vacancy advertised and i was adamant through to my agency that I, either i would go to a tertiary teaching hospital or i i would stay back in india i'm, I'm happy where i am so then the agency applied to the short to four hospitals is what i had said if i get to work in this four hospitals i'll go otherwise i don't want to go <laughs> so he applied and then somehow um this particular place they were about to advertise a post because one of their colleague had left and that's how i got through and they were interested i got a skype interview mm-hmm. with the clinical director and the clinical manager and then they approved uh, my application so even though if you don't have a fellowship it's fine if you have a fellowship it's very good out yeah. of all my other friends um uh, i know just two or three of them out of a lot many who could get through to a tertiary hospital because it's very difficult posts are very competitive and the local trainees they are always looking for such posts once they complete their training so uh but again you know if you prepare your application well give it more time and show what work you have actually done you can get through okay i think that would uh, answer both those uh, questions uh, there's another there's a very important uh, and uh, interesting question by dr nazrina hashmi who asks uh, uh, how are the litigation issues dealt with the uh, in the uk especially for radiologists so like i said if you are well covered by your professional indemnity in addition you also have nhs indemnity insurance so generally there's no issue um most of the times everybody miss findings in radiology uh, you will see you yourself or your colleagues missing something or the other every other week and that is what we discuss in discrepancy meetings and it is fairly i wouldn't say it's common but it is not uncommon as well so um i think it's no point to be afraid of afraid of it because it is a human error and uh, that is taken into consideration if at all there is a, a proper litigation so yeah i think that's fine because even if there is a litigation i have seen a few reports wherein um they transfer the cases to radiology experts uh, in a particular committee and the experts they go through it and then they say they give their findings but <clears throat> most of the times they are considerate enough to consider human error so as far as you are not making a big blunder it's fine a couple of questions about intervention radiology are you aware of the process uh, of uh, or uh, of how to be an uh, intervention radio pra- radiologist practitioner in the uk to be honest i'm not uh, very sure about the uh, mm-hmm. process of being an intervention i do non vascular interventions i do biopsies drainages mm-hmm. and all those things and it was agreed upon uh, when i joined so i think similarly when you when you would join uh, there there has to be an appropriate opening for such a post and it's basically what you discuss um at the time of your interview is what matters and if if they are okay with whatever experience you have shown in the background then then it should be fine so 
basically it's not like you come here as a consultant you directly start doing things on your own they will give you a good coverage they'll shadow you for a few months till you are confident enough and then you can start on your own uh, and i think that also answers another question by rad881 uh, who had asked uh, what is the uh, uh, scope of a general radiologist uh, whether we do uh, image guided interventions fluoroscopic studies are uh, referred i think as you mentioned uh, it depends on what you agree upon uh, before yeah. joining a particular institution yeah uh, before i forget i always had this question about these agencies uh, how trustworthy these are and uh, uh, because i get uh, even though i'm not a farsi uh, i get a lot of uh, people uh, friend requests especially on facebook uh, and i go to their profile and uh, they are like they're part of some agency uh, and there's no reason for me to uh, like this, i i find that spammy so uh, is there any due diligence or most of the reputed agencies are fine to work with um so there are uh, quite a few agencies which have helped a lot of people uh, move to uk for example i came through bdi resourcing mm -hmm. um then there are i i can't recollect the names mm -hmm. because um my post is pretty much stable here but there are a lot of agencies which are good and yeah um i agree some of them they they offer things and then it never happens but like i said if they ask for money that means they are they are fake so don't go with those because you never have to pay any agency if you want to come to uk yeah i think it's a good uh, uh, a baseline question for any kind of uh, uh, make rich scheme or uh, any kind of scheme if they are asking you money then you should uh, be aware of uh, uh, yeah that. A couple of other questions were uh, regarding teleradiology. Uh, uh, are you aware of any opportunities of teleradiology after FRCR? Yeah, so there uh, there are a few people who have been consultant who have come from India, been consultant radiologists in UK for ten fifteen years, and then now they've gone back to India and started their own teleradiology centers. reporting scans for the uk so yes if you have frcr you can do some uk tele radiology work as well and for example if someone who's uh, does not like is not associated with any uh, group as such uh, uh, he or she can can they approach uh, like an institute directly or how should they go about because i think right now uh, nobody is moving uh, but people have their frcr degrees in their hand and definitely would want to do some uh, have some extra income so uh, are you aware, aware of how these people can report uh, 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 tele radiology studies yeah so uh, there are a few tele radiology agencies in uk where the nhs work is outsourced to so either you can join those tele radiology services or you can join tele radiology services in india who report for the uk counterpart if you i am not sure you can directly approach any nhs trust or hospital uh, for tele radiology work because they don't know you and why would they send you scans if they don't know you they have never seen you or never worked with you because like i said most of the tele radiology places uh, which are offering uh, to report for nhs right now either they have worked in the nhs or they are still working in the nhs and doing tele radiology as part time yeah makes sense before move on, before we move on to our last uh, couple of questions uh, we have around 100 viewers make sure that you give us feedback and like the video so that uh, we have feedback and uh, if you're not yet subscribed subscribe to the channel uh, when you do that you the youtube algorithm not only will send the video to more people uh, and help them out uh, but it'll also improve your uh, uh, re your uh, youtube feed so make sure you do that uh, uh we'll take a lot uh, sorry for taking you uh, taking uh, a lot of your time but we'll take uh, yeah, last yeah. two questions so tanvi modi asks uh, if uh, uh, what are the other deterrents for the global fellowship program other than uh, the ones that you mentioned that you cannot sign off on the reports which i think it's very very uh, important like as residents we don't think much about that but as staff uh, for sure uh, that's a major deterrent so she asks if there is anything uh, else that uh, 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 is a deterrent um so there are no deterrents as such because like i said there are some people like me who are quite confident about their reports and 
uh there there will be some people who are not very confident and they need some support for the initial few years so i think global fellowship program is good for for some people who are not very confident um as in to give independent provide provide independent reports um otherwise um it's pretty much similar to how we work in um in in our home country so i think it's not a major hurdle or a major challenge to come and work over here it's just that you have to be um um a bit more elaborate in your report and also guide on um what should be the next appropriate step uh like unlike in india we say clinical correlation is suggested we don't really do that we always uh dig in a bit more to find out what actually is happening and then suggest the next appropriate step um so also if you come as a fellow uh, of course your pay would be less uh compared to what it would be as a consultant so i think that's another uh deterrent so yeah i have had arguments with the global uh radiology fellowship program directors about why are they doing this because if if i have completed frcr if i have 5 years of work experience as radiologist then why would i come here and work under somebody for 3 more years it's a lot to ask i guess um yeah that's my take but yeah of course people um, have their own different uh, expectations correct okay so last couple of questions i'll club them together uh, just to save some time uh, so sandeep giri has asked about any alternative pathways to frcr and avinash has asked uh, w- uh, about uh, uh, if there are any certain specific nhs trusts that we should look out for uh alternative pathway to frcr like i said is plab but again uh, you cannot get a consultant post over here if you do plab you have to do frcr to get a consultant post so doing plab has just one advantage is that after you do plab you can come to uk get gmc register uh, gmc registered and then come here and work as a registrar uh, in general medicine or something or in, maybe in radiology if you get a post um but then again you have to do uh, frcr the only advantage is that uh, getting dates for your exam is better if you are already in the uk compared to if you are in india uh what was the other question amar about nhs trusts uh, are there any specific uh, certain nhs trusts which uh, we should opt for uh, or are they e- <laughs> all of them equally good i know it's a very vague question but uh, yeah. uh, in general that would be like i would to reframe it it would be like uh, for ex- what all would you look for before choosing a particular workplace in the uk so yeah um one major thing is uh how will your family settle in with you uh, is this an appropriate place for your family so uh, depends on uh, depends on your uh, the profession of your spouse uh, that's one thing second thing is uh, how good the trust is at uh, offering you your sub specialty practice which you want to do that is another primary thing which i would consider uh, pay scale is almost the same all over uk so that is that is not a factor at all so the other factors is what i find more important uh, with that i think we will conclude our session uh, thank you dr kapadia uh, this was an exhaustive talk and uh, you answered all our questions uh, uh, very patiently and i'm sure uh, our residents who are watching this and even radiologists who have plans to move to the uk uh, uh, most of their questions will be answered so thank you once again yeah. for taking out time uh, okay. for this talk yeah yeah it was a pleasure thanks amar thanks for having yeah. me uh, thank you everyone who's been watching this live uh, uh, this saturday morning afternoon depend evening depending on what part of the world you're watching this even for those who are watching it later uh, uh, if you have any questions you can may, uh, you can answer uh, ask them in the comments and maybe i can batch them together and request pages to answer a few of them if possible uh, thank you everyone and uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for all future 
uh, to get uh, awesome radiology content in your feed. Uh, and uh, the next video that will be coming up uh, on your screen, uh, YouTube is recommending you uh, that video to you for a specific reason. So make sure that you uh, watch that. Okay, with that, I will say bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks.